Obviously, you've interviewed investors and traders of completely different styles, buying strength, buying weakness. Were there any common commonalities, especially when it comes to their mindset and approaches that really stuck out to you that, that you think kind of led to their success, regardless of their strategy? Yeah, well, it, you know, mindset, the mindset of a trader, uh, there is a lot of commonality. I mean, mm-hmm. the personal personalities, no, you know, yeah. you've got pe- you have people who are, who are like drill sergeants and you've got people who are kind of quiet, you know, I'm a shy, mm-hmm. you're very soft-spoken. And you got people who are really nice. You got people who are rude. <laughs> I mean, you, you've really got a kind of a, and you've got left wing, you've got right wing, you know, you mm-hmm. got personalities. It's just like a, if you took a, I think if you took a random sample of people, you would get, you know, and, and education, you, you've got P, you got, PhDs or near double PhDs in you know math and physics, and you've got people who didn't finish who who finished high school and not with very good grades, you know. Right. So you you really got all that's different, but the mind the mindset that they I think there's a commonality of kind of an intensity of focus mm-hmm. on 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 the trade the trade of trading uh, you mm-hmm. know as a trade as a as an endeavor. Uh, the ability to to lock out the emotional side, to to treat it as a as a task without letting your human emotions get you know get in the way uh, is one exception I can talk about. But essentially, uh, as Bill Eckhart, who is uh, Richard Dennis's partner and his CTA in his own right, as he pointed out, people is, he made the very nice point that people are so so poorly attuned to trading in terms of the way we've evolved our natural instincts that people will do worse than random. And so people are not confused. He's led with the cliche about monkeys throwing darts at the Wall Street page and doing this as well as professional traders. Eckhart's point is, no, the monkeys will do better because people's instincts will actually lead them to do worse than random. That worse than random is really important. And and so so the people who are successful are able to to not let, not react to this, uh, the emotional side, and to be very focused, to be very prepared, um, you know. And in this latest book, Undiscovered Market Wizards, probably, uh, I'm sorry, Unknown Market Wizards, mm-hmm. probably more so than in any other book uh, of the series, you get this. this so many of those traders that make such a big point about being in a round mindset, right mindset, and, and if things not going right close the book, walk away, come back next day or whatever, uh, to be really, uh, you know, to, to, to do mental preparation before a trade, you know, to get into a state of flow, to get a state of focus. All of these things, you see this repeatedly, how important the psychology is to, mm-hmm. the, to the art of trading. It's not just, it's not just a matter of intellect or approach or even money management that is really about having the right mindset to execute and to be aware of your own weaknesses and to and in, like one trade like Richard there's not actually a few traders who do this but one who's kind of exemplary at it like Richard Barge who will like keep a spreadsheet of a number of different types of emotions and every day whenever he's committed any of those emotional sins we'll make a check and at the end of the week we'll look at the spreadsheet and see if any column has more than a couple of checks and know that's an area where he has to work on uh, besides also keeping notes on all of his trades. So mm-hmm. you see this, this is kind of a uh, uh, common, uh, common ground. Uh, you see this respect for learning from mistakes that comes up again and again and again. Right. Uh, a, a number of traders in this, in this book uh, talk about, well, and not only talk about it, bring out these thousand page binders with, with notes on all the trades, you know, the, the trades, their emotional state, you can see this is a really serious thing. And the point of that is they're trying to learn from yeah. what they've done right, more importantly, from what they've done wrong. And 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 kind of the king of the king of learning from mistakes, one who makes it maybe most instrumental. And a number of these traders actually, in fact, one trader sort of idealizes it is somebody I spoke about is Ray Dalio. Mm-hmm. And Ray Dalio's maybe guiding philosophy is you have to learn from mistakes. And he, he, he does his philosophy not only in trading, but in general. In fact, 
he kind of uh, makes a nice point about our educational system, how it's mis how it's misguided because it's always geared to getting the right answer. Yeah. And his, his point is you don't learn by memorizing the right answer. You learn by, you know, trying to, to get the right answer, making mistakes and seeing what you did wrong and going from that. So, but that kind of permeates his whole philosophy and certainly Bridgewater is built on that. And according to him, at least, the, re, you know, the development of their trading model is, is, is totally a function of their having incorporated mistakes into improving the model as, as years went by. And so you get that in this book. And like I say, one, one trade, in fact, there's a story about uh, Dalja Dalliwal, who, who kind of bid to have lunch with, with, with Ray Dalio. And I won't go into the whole story, but uh, we'll just leave it at that, whether he got the bid or not, because it, it goes back and forth a few times. <laughs> 